Hi students, in this video we are going to summarize the topics that we have covered in quadratic equation. So when we started studying quadratic equations, the first thing that we, we saw is generalization of the concept of real line and when you consider a real line, uh, when you consider a straight line that is of the form mx plus b. So now we decided we decide where m is not equal to 0 obviously when we decided to extend this notion we came up with an idea which is of the, which is the function of the form fx is equal to ax square plus bx plus c and we forced a condition a not equal to 0. Now you, uh, you can easily figure out the analogy here m is not equal to 0 so that the value of x makes sense if m is equal to 0 and this is the equation of a non-vertical line if you remember. This is the equation of a non-vertical line. In a similar manner now we are posing a condition that a is not equal to 0 that means the quadratic term x square keeps its relevance. Therefore, I have forced a condition a is not equal to 0. So, we said any function of this form will be called as quadratic function and I have given you uh, how the name quadratic function has arrived upon. Let us not go into that now. Now, the first thing that we studied in this particular sessions, in these sessions is first how to graph this quadratic function. So, how to find a graph of the quadratic function? I gave you three tips. One, first you find x is equal to minus b by 2a which, which will be called as axis of symmetry. We have already seen how to derive the equation of axis of symmetry in some of the old videos. So, first you figure out this point, then you figure out the y intercept of this particular function, y intercept and then you choose any arbitrary point say x1 figure out what is y1 on this graph by substituting the values into this function and then using symmetry you figure out another point x2 and y2 which y2 will essentially be equal to y1 because it is the axis of symmetry and use these points plot these points on a graph paper and figure out what is happening to the function. So, it is this simple. So, graphing a quadratic function is very easy. Let us do it for our uh, illustration purposes using one example. So, let me first put the x and y axis uh, properly. Let me first change the layout of the uh, paper so that I will be more precise in dealing with the axis. Yes. So, now let us take the x and y coordinates in this uh, domain. Let us take this. Okay, so let me put the curve here. Let me fix it here. Fine. So this gives a nice picture. Let us take one function. Let us say my uh, let us say my function is f x equal to x square plus four x plus four. Let us say this is my function, and I want to uh, plot uh, this function on this graph. So, in order to plot the function on the graph, let me enumerate it. This is x axis, this is y axis and this is a point plus 1, this is a point plus 2, this is a point minus 1, minus 1, this is a point minus 2. Let us not enumerate it too much. Each unit represents one unit on x on in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. So, let us focus on our methodology or our recipe, cookbook recipe. First, you figure out what is x is equal to minus b by 2a. So, in that case, I need to first figure out what is a, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4 and c is equal to 4. Fine. What is minus b by 2a? x is equal to minus b by 2a. I will simply substitute here. That is equal to minus 4 into 4. Oh, sorry, it is not 4. Minus 4 into 2. So, I have used a green pen. So, it will be 2 times 1 which will give me minus 2. So, x is equal to minus 2 is a point which I should look for 
and I should draw a vertical line along this point because this is the axis of symmetry. So let me let me draw the vertical line along this point x is equal to minus 2. Okay, so this is the vertical line that I have drawn. So let me draw a line around the point x is equal to minus 2. This is remember this is the axis of symmetry. Now I need to uh, what I need to figure out according to our cookbook recipe is this y intercept. What is a y intercept over here? If I substitute the value x is equal to 0, I should be able to derive the y intercept. So, in this case, if I substitute in this function x is equal to 0, I will get y intercept to be equal to 4. That means another point that I have is 0, 4. Okay. So, let me go here on this graph and plot that point 0 comma 4 okay here i have figured out what is the axis of symmetry x is equal to minus 2 so it, uh, the due calculation will show me that minus 2 comma 0 is the point on the curve you just substitute this minus 2 into this function x square minus 4 x square plus 4 x plus 4 you will get the answer okay so now i have actually figured out x is equal to minus b by 2a as axis of symmetry. I have figured out what is a y intercept. Let me choose this point x1, y1 to be the y intercept. Then what is a point x2, y2? So the y2 is definitely going to be 4. So what is a point x2? Remember x is equal to minus 2 is the axis of symmetry. So the corresponding point should be 2 units apart from this point which, which is somewhere here and the value that function will take it somewhere here okay and what is this point this point is minus 4 on x axis so i have figured out a three a set of three points which will actually help me in understanding the function that is the first point from left to right is minus 4 comma 4 minus 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 4 will these three points suffice for me to draw a graph yes they will be so uh, let us draw a graph let me take a green color i have already used let me take a black color and let us join a smooth curve which is joining these points in a symmetric fashion okay so this is my smooth curve which joins these two points so what is the behavior of this function it will go this way it will go this way it is symmetric so it will behave in this fashion yes so i have given you a graph of a quadratic function this is how we will graph using our cookbook recipe of three points three point strategy is for graphing a function let us bring in another important concept that we studied in week four that is the slope of a quadratic function when we uh, i have actually put up two videos on slope of a quadratic function one video demonstrates to you how to use the angle of inclination or tan of the inclination in order to figure out the slope of a function at specific point another video actually generalizes the concept of the uh, concept of the slope of a uh, of a straight line and gives you how to compute the slope of a straight line. So let me bring in the concept of slope for this particular function. So what is the slope of this function at any particular point, right? We have already seen in those videos that it is variable. So uh, let us take the new concept that I have introduced, which is the difference between two consecutive points upon the distance between two consecutive points on x axis. So this that is what we will use. So now I will define a function gx. We have defined the slope as f of x plus h minus f of x minus h upon 2h. This is not a general definition of slope. Just remember this. This is the definition specific to quadratic functions or generalization of the definition of straight line. We need some more intricacies when we actually want to define the slope of a general function. 
so in this case it doesn't harm we can actually compute and we i have already shown that uh, for a function of the form ax square plus bx plus c the slope of a quadratic function is 2 ax plus b if you have a doubt you can go to the video uh, which deals with this particular derivation so in this case now we have we have an added benefit we can simply calculate the slope of a function at any point using the parameters that are involved a and b 1 and 4 respectively so this is 2x plus 4 and therefore you will again verify if you put gx equal to 0 you can again verify 2x plus 4 will give you this point x is equal to minus 2 is the point of uh, where the function attains its minimum minimum or maximum in particular when the slope is equal to 0 the function is actually trying to switch from increasing trend to uh, decreasing trend or decreasing trend to increasing trend whatever uh, you may prefer to learn about the function will be given when slope is equal to 0 it changes its behavior so based on that when you are at the vertex which is x is equal to minus b by 2a we concluded that and x is equal to minus b by 2a will always be the vertex of any quadratic function so we concluded that the function will attain either its minimum or maximum value when it is at the vertex when the value is evaluated at the vertex so in this case x is equal to minus 2 is the vertex and therefore the minimum value that this function can attain is the value 0 if I change the function and simply multiply this with a negative sign the function will start attaining its maximum value this topic is also well discussed in the topic of quadratic functions uh, in order to give you a brief understanding when I replace this with a negative sign what I am doing is actually I am reflecting along x axis so the function will so look exactly similar as a mirror image of this function and therefore the maximum value it will attain will be 0 when I substitute it with a negative sign the maximum value it will attain will be 0 and this function the one which is here drawn here will never attain the minimum value because as x tends to plus infinity this function is going to minus infinity and when x tends to minus infinity again because of the symmetry this function is going to minus infinity similarly if you take this function then this function will never go in any other direction because as x increases to minus inf x, x decreases to minus infinity this function increases to infinity as x increases to infinity this function goes to infinity therefore the first graph this graph will attain the minimum value and the second graph will attain the maximum value we can characterize this as if a is greater than 0 then I will always get the minimum value if a is less than 0 I will always get the maximum value this is the characterization of maximum and minimum values